Hello and welcome to Miss Charlotte Astrology. I'm Miss Charlotte, a full-time working astrologer, and on this channel I analyse the astrological charts of public figures, and very often they are celebrities. But today I will be analysing the sinistry chart of two very polarising, controversial, yet iconic figures, and they are senior, the two senior members of the British royal family, Prince Harry and his wife, Duchess Meghan. So... Um, I have done a signature chart for Megan and Piers Morgan, ugh, and I did a, I did Megan's chart by itself earlier. I had some interesting comments on there. Some of them not very kind. Most of them were great, but some of them were not kind. Um, keep it. Can you just keep it kind in the comments, please? Can we not be degenerates? Thank you. Because I keep talking about how monarchists have a certain vibe, especially the, the monarchists that compare Meghan to Kate in order to put Meghan down. It's disgusting. It's a vibe. Look at the comment sections on Kate Middleton uh, posts and look at the comment sections on Meghan Markle posts. There is definitely a vibe difference. One is way up, way up here and the other one's down here. It's just an observation I've made, and it's a shame because Kate is literally, she's a queen. She's literally, like, she, like, honestly, stop. You're making her look bad by behaving this way. Okay. Keep it, keep it, keep it kind, everyone. <laughs> you can not like someone, and you can also, you can also have respect. You can not like someone. Let me put, let me, let me, let me just get this out here. You not liking someone does not give you the right and it does not justify their abuse. I'll say that again. Not liking someone is not a justification for abusing them. Okay. Cool. Great. Wonderful. All right. So I'm going to look at Megan and Harry's chart. Um, under, try to understand their synastry. Why were they together? What is their destiny? Like, just what is going on? Why Why are they so hated? Like, they're very popular people, but I think they're equally as unpopular as they are popular. And what's the reason for that? Because William and Kate seem to, they make a great team. I talked about that in the previous video. They make a fantastic team. Um, and I think one of my followers said it was a very pragmatic relationship, right? This is a very passionate relationship, truly. But passionate relationships don't always translate into the best working relationship or partnership, right? So let's have a look at it. Um, this is their chart when I lay the when I lay them on top of each other. As you can see, Megan, Megan's in the red. Uh, and Harry's in the blue. So Harry is a Virgo sun, a Taurus moon, and a Capricorn rising. And Megan is a Leo sun, a Leo, sorry, a, Le a Leo sun, a Libra moon, and a Cancer rising. So they're opposite rising signs, actually. It's ideal if your partner has the opposite rising sign to you because then you look really good together. Like you, you fill out each other's charts. It's really cute. All right, so let's move down. I'm going to come back to this whole chart at the end and discuss the aspects, but I want to focus on the conjunctions and where planets are playing out so we can get a more detailed picture of their relationship. Okay, so big reputation, moon Chiron conjunction and Lilith on the midheaven. All right, so, okay, let's talk about why these two are not considered... I don't know, respectable, likable. Like, let's talk about that. So, if you look at if you look at uh, Megan's midheaven, it's lying in Aries, and I talked about this in the in my previous analysis of her chart. It's really uncomfortable for her to have an Aries midheaven because she doesn't understand it. She has trouble feeling into it. Who you who you have to be when you want to be successful and you want to make money and you want to be famous or you want to just have a, a, a steady career. You have to play into the expectations of the public. Your midheaven is 
other people's perceptions of you. Even if you don't personally relate to your midheaven, it has nothing to do with you. I always say this, your midheaven has nothing to do with your wants and needs, unless you've got some personal placements up there, which makes it easier to embody that energy. If you've got nothing up there, it's hard. And I say this as a Virgo midheaven with no Virgo placements. It's very, very difficult to be a Virgo when I'm not. But I do the best I can. Uh, Megan has a Libra stellium. And she is a Leo, and that's nicely aspected, but the ruler of her midheaven is in Cancer, and it's exactly squared. Like, it is not great. It's not easy. And then on top of all of that, Harry's Lilith lies in Aries. What is Lilith? The dark feminine, the goddess of abortion and divorce and evil women things, eh, right? That, gosh, that thing is on her midheaven, disgracing her, being with Harry made her mo more famous for sure. In the same way that, you know, the only reason why Catherine's famous is because she got with William. But it's more favorable because his Venus falls into her midheaven, giving her glory and honor and respectability. For Meghan, being with Harry just disgraces her. It makes her look like some power-hungry, gold-digging, evil, vengeful, lilith kind of figure. And that's not who she is. I have to remind you guys, when I sit... <laughs> If I saw Lilith near any of her personal placements, I would be kind of worried, but she doesn't. She just doesn't. She just seems like she's evil because because there's this malefic there's this malefic energy playing out in a public house. Her being perceived as some, you know, vengeful evil Aries whatever, like that that's not who she is. That's just your expectation and perception of her, and that's not her fault. Okay? Um and then let's have a look at this north node. Depending on how, where you look, his north node is either in zero degrees Gemini or it's in 29 degrees Taurus. But it is in a conjunction with his moon in Taurus. So I'm just going to read it as a Taurus north node, which is about security. And it is about money, but it's about family as well. And the fact that it's in his fourth house, he was meant to have children. He was meant to have a family. And in doing so, he helps uh, Megan with this Chiron here. So Megan has a difficult Chiron placement. She has it in a public house. Chiron is where you're wounded and where you're rejected. It's it's the biggest insecurity you have in your life. Her Chiron, remember Chiron is a generational placement. So everyone in this late mid to late 70s to the early 80s has this placement. It's an insecurity around traditional things and money. And it can play out in so many different ways. Um, self-worth as well. It plays out in so many different ways. Um, for her, her wound around self-worth and money and all those things, it plays out in her 11th house, 11th house of the public, of the network. So she's someone that, you know, she, she is a bit of a socialite. She is someone that really wants to fit in. And um, we'll talk about the rest of her chart. Why is that? But she will find herself being rejected by the network and by the elite. For some reason, she's just not allowed. She finds herself in exclusive spaces where she had no invitation. She kind of tagged along. That's the energy. I'm not saying that's literal. It could be, but that's the energy of her 11th house. It's very painful because she so wants to belong and she so wants to be respected and she so wants to be wealthy and beautiful and popular. She really, really does. And then she just gets knocked back and it's it's very difficult. However, Harry's moon soothes this Chiron. Having a Chiron moon conjunction can be really beautiful because that person's going to tell you, it's okay, here's a Band-Aid, let me help you with that. His moon is very nurturing. It's also exalted. So with the moon on her Chiron, he's going to open the doors to these public spaces. He's going to be like, let me, let, let me take you into my world. Here, I'll protect you. And she's like, oh, my God, thank you. Like it's very much like, the, you know, a, a, a white knight, you know, saving the princess kind of energy, you know, and, and, and allowing her to rest and allowing her to just – get her energy back and it's it's very healing um this and um his north node in taurus with the moon is about children and guess what she's giving him in return our family so he helps her with this very public you know this very difficult public public rejection um he invites her into the ballroom 
and she's going to pop out some kidlets. Yeah, uh, her part of fortune, it's so funny, she has a part of fortune at like I think zero or one degrees in Gemini and I have the same one, which is really interesting. Uh, but hers, uh, hers is in the... I think it's in the night. I think it's it's in the eleventh house. When they when they're upside down like this, when I look at synastry charts, sometimes it's hard. I'm like, um, what is that? Uh, her her part of fortune would be in the no in the twelfth house. It's in the eleventh house, but it plays out in the twelfth house. Um, but that sits on his Chiron in Gemini. So, I mean, it's another nice placement. Um, part of fortune is where you have, I mean, it is fortune. I mean, it could very well be money. It could very well be fame. It could be, you know, it's it's a very lucky, happy energy. Uh, it's a calculated point in the chart. And that is pretty much sitting on his Chiron as well. So whatever wound he has with his siblings, whatever wound he has with communication, she is able to uh, make up for that in some way. She has strength where he has weakness. So that's a really nice, it's a nice synastry. Um yeah, so I hope that makes sense, guys. She, uh, he, he disgraces her and uh, he disgraces her, but he also heals her wound. He kind of activates it as well. Like I think walking into a ballroom full of aristocrats and nobles and kings and queens and you're some mixed race girl from California and everyone thinks you're corny and loud and rude. Yeah, that's not easy. But he, um, you know, he sh he has his, you know, she's like tucked under his wing and protected so it's cute uh it's difficult though foreign lover equals public disgrace Lilith on the MC again and the ninth and fourth house synastry so um I talked about a moment ago how Harry's Aries Lilith lies in her 10th house disgracing her making her look like a bitchy you know overly ambitious gold digging evil person whatever she has her Lilith <laughs> on his midheaven. She also has uh, Uranus there as well. So she does something similar. She makes him look weak and overpowered because Lilith is a bit of a succubus. Lilith is, um, like I said, that dark feminine energy. So when that, in a woman's chart, when you put it over the top of a man's chart, it's going to emasculate him, which is the image that he has at the moment, like he's being emasculated and being trod all over, which is not necessarily true because we can look at their other synastry. We look at, we'll look at the other planets. It's, that's not the case, but it just seems that way. I will say with her Uranus falling into the same sign as the Midheaven, she also makes him more modern. She makes him more relatable. She makes him more outgoing as a, a, a um, uh, Uranus rules Aquarius, so it's the networker. She makes him more popular, even though there is this kind of Harry's a simp, you know, you've got all of that crap going on. She also makes him m more likable and relatable in a way, right? Um, Harry has a difficult midheaven placement, unlike his brother, who is Jupiter on his midheaven, which makes him look really glorious and lovely, which isn't necessarily the case in his personal life, but Jupiter on the midheaven for William gives him that honor and glory. But Saturn on the midheaven is someone that has to really work hard for their reputation. And he did, you know, he works, he, 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 he does the Invictus games. He works with people that have had very traumatic injuries, you know, like Harry has put a lot of effort into it and it's been many, many years. And, um, it's made him respectable. People with Saturn on the midheaven, they, they will climb up the up, up to the mountain, even if it takes their whole lives. And um, yeah, he's he he has done that. He's, I mean, he had he had a lot of disgrace in the lead up, but around his Saturn return, he really came into his own because of these charitable charitable projects, which are, I think, far more influential and meaningful than anything Prince William's done or is doing. Truly. Um, so, and I think it's because William's got this placement where honor and glory just comes to him naturally, like just automatically and naturally. He doesn't have to work that hard for it. Harry has to work for it. Harry will leave, I think, in terms of his work with uh, veterans, he'll leave more of a legacy. And um, it'll be great. It's a different kind of legacy anyway. Uh, so, yeah, there's that mid heaven there. And 
This is this is her IC. This is Megan's IC, which marks out the fourth house of the home. She has her moon, Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto, and Juno there. I think she was very loved. Uh, she was one of many children, but she was very isolated. She was almost like she was part of a big family, but she wasn't. Like she was an extra child or she was – you know, um, I think she was loved by her parents, but I think she was very isolated in the family that her parents made together. They did divorce quite young. I mean, Saturn playing out in that fourth house, Pluto in that fourth house. There are some things going on that she doesn't talk about because she's embarrassed. I think there there's potential for, I don't necessarily think it's her mum's side and it's whatever, but it just seems like her dad's side is a bit messy. And there's a lot of trauma and there's a lot of trouble on her dad. At least it's louder. I'm sure there's both sides. There's always karma in both sides of the family. But she is a bit embarrassed by them. And she, right, she should be. She's a Libra moon. She doesn't want people to think that her family's crap. That she doesn't want people to think that she comes from bad stock, right? Libra moons. And I have a Libra moon. We're kind of snobby like that. Like, we love people. We love everyone. We just don't want people to think that we're trash. <laughs> And very often we can come from trashy families, trust me. Um, not that I don't think I come from a trashy family. I come from humble means, so I don't want to bag my family out like that. Although I, they piss me off, especially right now, they piss me off. Anyway, I get what I get. What, what Megan's going through, <laughs> totally. Um, but Saturn, Saturn on the moon. I mean, that's. I feel like she had to grow up very quickly. Like as a, I don't want to. Is the word precocious? She was just. Is precocious and is that is that an appropriate word to describe a young child or that has to grow up quickly? Because I feel like it's a bit wrong to use that word. Um, she just had she had to she was mature at a young age, and I think that had a lot to do with her parents splitting up and feeling like a bit of an alien within the family. Although Jupiter here is expansive, I think she was maybe a little bit spoilt. Doesn't necessarily mean she was a bad person or anything like that, or her family was bad, but she was given a lot of material things um, as a form of love, and that's a bit of a love language for her. But as a result, she's quite generous because a moon, a moon Jupiter conjunction can make someone really, really generous, right? Um, the Pluto, it's not in a conjunction here, but it is in the same sign. That's her healing family wounds she's someone and that's the thing if you've got Pluto in the fourth house you are going to be the scapegoat for everyone you're going to be blamed by everyone you're the problem because you because because you see the bullshit Megan is going to be made the scapegoat for both of these families she it's not an easy job it's not an easy job being her I think she puts up puts up a beautiful front she has a beautiful smile but she has a lot of trouble and she doesn't get any sympathy because this is all playing out in a private house. This is what we don't see. This girl has a lot of anxiety, a lot. I think that she could be a little bit difficult at times. You know, she's a Leo sun with the North node. Like I've, every time I see a North node person or a sun North node person, like they can have their moments, trust me. But do I see a bad person? No, I don't. And it's okay. Some of us are difficult because we have trauma. Compassion, guys. Compassion. Um, Harry makes this a little bit easier. His Venus is in Libra. And actually, his Venus, look at that, is in the ninth house. What's Venus in the ninth house? Foreign lover. Marriage to a foreigner. My dad has a, a Venus in Sagittarius. Who did he marry? A Filipino. Some British dude married a <laughs> Every time I talk to a Venus in Sag or a ninth house Venus, they always marry someone who's from a different country or at least uh, speaks a different language or comes from a different culture or religion or someone that just lives a completely different lifestyle. Very often, a Venus in the ninth house will marry someone a lot older or quite a bit younger than them as well because they're, they, need, they need to have a spiritual and intellectual awakening that can only be given through a loving experience. Right? It's kind of like that song Aladdin, you know, where he like, you know, like in the Disney movie where Aladdin's like, do you trust me? Come with me on the carpet. I can show you the world. That's what, that, that is what Megan is to Harry. Megan is a street rat, Aladdin. That's who she is. 
this beautiful, sexy creature who's just like, I'm tough and I'm smart and come with me. I'll show you the world. And we can sit on top of a rooftop in China and look at fireworks together. Like, that's Megan. She's Aladdin. Right? And they don't want princes or princesses going out with street rats. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> so, yikes. Also, there's Juno here, Juno and Pluto and Jupiter all clustered together. So transformative experiences through marriage and home. I mean, we'll see how this plays out um, because I've, I've said this before. If their relationship doesn't work, and I am rooting for them, if it doesn't work, it's not because they didn't love each other. It's because of circumstances because there's a lot of love here in this chart. There's almost too much of it for it to be a proper business relationship, unlike Kate and William, because they've got that coolness. These two got a lot of heat. Um, the missing puzzle piece, Harry's Leo interception and Virgo third, eighth, and, and their Virgo third and eighth house industry. So uh, Harry is an eighth houser and he's a Virgo. So even though he's a bit of a hothead and he's quite loud in the streets when he was, you know, punching up photographers in his youth, really, truly, he's, he's, He's a shy Virgo. I know he likes sports and he was a naughty one, but he's he has a lot of secrets and he has a lot of trauma. Um, I, like I for a long time it was very unresolved. Even though he's a Virgo, he's an he's a Scorpio Virgo because of that eighth house placement and Mercury in the eighth house. Like he knows everyone's dirty little secret. Everyone he didn't spill everything in that book. He really didn't. I think he was quite kind actually. Special. Not kind to William, though. Oh, have you read that book? Woo! <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's quite uh, cut off. He's quite secluded in this house. He's like, I know everyone's secrets. I have everyone's information. He's incredibly critical of them, too. Uh, but having his eighth house placements play out in Megan's third house of local community and friends, I think moving to California with her and being in a foreign land with her has opened him up a little bit more and it's made him a bit more social, made him a bit more likable even. I, uh, I mean, this is a really nice placement. It's nice. And her Venus on his Mercury, on his sun, she, she finds him attractive and vice versa. When you have, because he's got his, he's got his Libra Venus pretty much on her moon. She has her Virgo Venus pretty much on his sun and his Mercury to eat to each other, they represent everything that they value in a partner. It's a very cooperative energy to have these conjunctions with the Venus. So it's cute. It brings him out of his shell. Like eighth house is a very hard shell to crack. And her little Venus is like, come over here <laughs> in the third house. Come, let's go. Let's go to a nice restaurant in Calabasas. Let's go to the park with my mom. <laughs> That's what that is. Um, Harry has uh, an interception in Leo. So it, he is descendants in Cancer, and then his eighth house lies in Virgo. So he's got this Leo energy that's just lost in his seventh house, and she fills in that placement. Not only does she have a Mars in Cancer that's in his, like, right on his descendant, we'll get there. Oops, we'll get there. But she fills out this interception, this energy that he's lacking in his chart. She makes him feel complete. The missing puzzle piece is the Leo energy, right? And she does that. She's the missing puzzle piece. It is lying in his eighth house. So that is shared resources. Oh, no, wait, it's sorry. It's not. It's in the seventh house. Backtrack, backtrack. It is still sharing and caring and all of those things. Um, but, I mean, she's taking his money. As she should, because she's his partner. That's what that means. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but they, they fill each other's pockets. Like, they do, they do fill each other's pockets. I feel like the financial situation, I don't want to speak on that too much, but... Um, I'm wondering what they are doing for money. Hopefully they've made some wise investments with this. Hopefully. I mean, her Venus falls into his eighth house. He benefits financially off it as well. I think she has a lot more practical skills when it comes to, um, work. She's accustomed to working hard. He's not really, 
unless it's in the context of the royal family. And that's a different kind of work. Still hard work, but just very, very different. D uh, different, yeah. All right, let's move on. Regulating chaos in the 6th and 12th house, Sinistry. Interesting. Oh, she's a yoga girl. She's got that Neptune in the 6th or playing into the 6th house, doesn't she? Um, okay, so... I mean, Mars is the phallus, Mars is the PP, it's sex, and he has that in a conjunction. It's got a big orb, but it's still a conjunction with Uranus. Very unpredictable anger. It's in Sagittarius and it squares his Virgo, Virgo placements, even though he is quite introverted and, uh, most of the time. He has his moments where he can be Sagittarius and completely disgrace himself in that 11th house of the public. If you have malefics in your 11th house, especially a Mars, you got to be careful with your anger because it's going to land you on the front page of some newspaper. It's going to cause a circus. There's going to be attention on you and not in the right ways. There's going to be public disgrace. It's going to be embarrassing. Um, so that's something in his chart that I have noticed that she, he does have that malefic stellium in the 11th. And he was really badly behaved for quite a while because he was traumatized from the death of his mom for years. And he was just drinking and drugging and like, bleh. so not an easy placement. He was very, very messy for a long time. Uh, with his Mars and Sagittarius, he's very motivated by knowledge expansion and spiritual experiences. And I think that's that's why he's very interested in other people's cultures and why he loves to travel and why he goes to Africa every so often or he did in the past so he could just chill out <laughs> he could just be alone on you know in the bushland so to speak so that makes a lot of sense now that energy plays out in Megan's sixth house I mean it does it's in her fifth house but it plays into her sixth house of work um, it keeps her busy. Being with him keeps her busy. Um, and I think having a malefic in there herself, it might make it harder for her to have a more regulated, balanced life. It's not the worst sinistry in the world, but having a bigger household, them getting together, it's just a busy house. It's a very busy, they have offices, the ring, the, the, the phones are, off, are ringing all the time, like that kind of energy. Um, I wonder if they, I wonder how often they smoke the green stuff because that Neptune in the sixth house, she, she, did you know during her first marriage or during her, her the wedding, her first wedding, she was rolling blunts and giving them out as party favors at her wedding in Jamaica. Like I knew this girl was my, was my type of girl. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the planet of like uh, spirituality and drugs. Like that's a yoga girl, but that's also like a we <laughs> a smoker girl <laughs> in the sixth house of health, the most spiritual, addicted planet. <laughs> uh, but she's quite fit and healthy, which is which is interesting. But yoga is also a bit of a spiritual practice, isn't it? So that makes a lot of sense to have that in there. Um, so Harry's Jupiter is in Capricorn and that's pretty much on his ascendant that makes him that makes him even more interested in other people he's always looking for an adventure despite having quite reserved rising sign Jupiter on there just makes him a bit more open and friendly that is lying in Megan's seventh house of partnership so he's going to bring her a lot of connections and opportunities right being with being together is going to bring her a lot of opportunities and obviously fame Okay, it's good. And Capricorn is business, so there we go. Um, now, Mars on the Descendant and <laughs> War in a House of Peace. Okay, so in their sinistry, Jupiter is in her seventh house, right? And that's great. That's a nice and easy energy. But her Mars, a malefic energy, the, the planet of the boom boom, right? It's a weapon. Uh, Mars is on his descendant, pretty much exact. And the descendant marks out the seventh house of peaceful partnerships and having a, having a boom, boom in there, having a weapon in there. I mean, I don't necessarily think this is something she consciously did. Maybe I'm wondering if he had, if he had a group of friends that would maybe. I mean, okay. Go look up his best friend. Go go find the dudes that Prince Harry was friends with and go 
find some articles on how terribly behaved they were. Go. Go look it up. There's some racist crap. There's some degenerate behavior. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot. These people, literally his friends, this is what aristocrats do. They get on horses and they hunt animals for fun as a recreation. That's just something that they've always done, darling. That's just something they do. Like, these people are literally just awful. (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised if Megan came along. When she came along, she's like, I don't like you hanging out with people that are degenerates. And he was like, okay. I mean, there were, a lot of his mates came out and said, he doesn't hang out with us anymore. I wonder why. Because of Megan. And maybe that's not completely her fault. Maybe there were, maybe there was a reason. I'm going to be devil's advocate or Megan's advocate in this. Like sometimes your boyfriend's friends suck and they're not the greatest people. Um, now I could also read it as her starting fights with people that are in his circle for whatever reason. Being with her makes his friends turn away. That's what I can see because no one wants to face a, no one wants to face a weapon like that. So, but he had, honestly, his friends, not, not high caliber people. They had a lot of money and they had some titles, but they weren't good people. And Megan cares about good people. I think she likes the idea of being a bit famous and having a bit of money, but not with degenerates. Like she's, I'm a Libra moon. She's a Libra moon. I feel like there's no amount of money that's going to make someone a good person. So I'm still not going to associate with them. Anyway, uh, so this is their whole chart here. Um, I mean, I, I like it. I think it's pretty good. I will say... That his moon, if we, you'll see um, the finger of God here. You see the two green dotted lines, right? That's a yod. It's a little bit painful. It's annoying. It's not the most painful placement, but it's the finger of God. It's the thing that you have to like do. It's a, it's a lesson, right? It's an awkward placement because it's not very well supported. Uh, But the yod is showing that no matter how difficult, He's got to raise this family. He's got to make his dreams come true. And sometimes making your dreams come true requires sacrifice. They require a little bit of suffering, but it's all for the greater good. And the greater good is that he has some healthy and happy and normal kids. It's a nice north node. It's just very, very painful because if you move up, what does it mean? What are these uh, dots joining up with? Pluto, which rules his midheaven. And Lilith, oh, no, no, not Lilith, sorry. Mars in the 11th. Oh, some more angry 11th house. Angry social placement. So disgrace, basically. That disgraceful Mars and Uranus in the 11th house of friends and networks. Oh, so him having a family, having kids, getting married means he's got to suffer through disgrace and embarrassment, people chatting shit about him. And also neglecting his his job in the royal family. And you could argue that what he did was selfish, but he wanted children, you know? So funny that him having children and getting married is being selfish, but when the other people when the other people in his family do the same thing, it's not. <sighs> That's from his perspective anyway. Um, Him marrying the wrong type of woman, marrying an American who didn't really fit in. I mean, that was the biggest sin. He should have just, he should have just married some vanilla girl who was an aristocrat. He should have just married some girl who wasn't that interesting and wasn't that pretty and everybody would have been happier with that. But he didn't. He married a star. He married a Leo. And Leos are kind of self-centered and narcissistic. And that's okay because... I'm an Aries. Let's be narcissistic together, Leos. Because <laughs> I like Leos. I know what you're on about. I really like Leos. They're my sisters. Sagittarius and Leo bitches forever. <laughs> All right, I've got some final thoughts here. Um, so individual desires trumps duty and institution. So in the Kate and William reading, I talk about how duty and institution trump their individual desires because that doesn't their individual desires do not matter. It's about the duty and the service. These two are far more emotional and passionate. So what they want goes above all else, right? 
Uh, the negative perception of them can be attributed. Why do I always do this? I'm dyslexic. I'm very dyslexic. The negative perception of them can be attributed, not attribution, attribute. <laughs> The negative perception of them can be attributed to their Liliths being so close to each other's midheavens. They disgrace each other, basically. Uh, makes him look like a simp and makes her look like a witch. That's basically what that means. Both of them have an insecurity stemming from being the youngest child from a broken family, and they look to each other to heal that. Um, so... That goes for that, – that's the Chiron stuff as well. Um, his Chiron in Gemini, that's about siblings and communications, also intellectual. Her Chiron in Taurus is about the traditional family stuff, um, and they help each other with those things. Um, and he, with his Venus in her fourth house, it kind of softens the, the lessons or softens the blow of having a really dysfunctional family. So they both – they're both cut from the same cloth. Like, they're both the youngest child, so they connect on that. Harry and um, Ma um, Kate and William are the eldest children, so they connect on that. There's that responsibility and duty to something greater, whereas these two, it's like, I want to be seen. <laughs> youngest children and be like that. <laughs> um, this is an equal partnership. However, Meghan is the more ambitious, competent, and skilled in professional endeavors, while Harry is more interested in domestic life and humanitarian work, which from the outside looks like an uneven partnership. So I think they have a pretty even partnership. I just think she has more skills. And I think he's happy to stay home. He's got a north node with the moon in the fourth house. Like he wants to be a stay at home dad. And if she wants to go rule the world, you know, and she wants to have all these businesses, fantastic. And I, and like, yeah, he, he can work, but he can stay home and look after the kidlets. What's wrong with that? You know, I mean, he served his country. Why not? He's proven himself a man. Megan fills an interception in the seventh house of partnership, which makes him feel complete. So she is a missing piece of the puzzle. That's how he feels about her. And despite their loving relationship, her presence is alienating for the people closest in his life. Um, like I said earlier, I, he ended some long-term relationships or friendships when when they got together and either by, you know, her instruction or her advice or because people were put off by her for, for whatever reason, you know, unfortunate, isn't it? But anyway, all right, guys, uh, that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And, um, yeah, uh, comment below, like, what are your feelings about Megan and Harry? I'm a fan. I can see that, you know, she's not perfect, neither is he, who is, um, but I choose to have compassion for them because, I mean, it's like <laughs> Harry and Meghan against the world, but I'm like, yeah, love, yeah, like it's so much more like hot and heavy compared to uh, Kate and William's child. And you know what, I'm biased because I'm, I'm an Aries and I'm I'm, I've, <laughs> I was looking at my chart and I laid it on top of Megan's. I was like, oh my gosh, I have all my, like all these planets on her midheaven. I've got my sun on her midheaven and my Mars on her descendant. And I was like, that's why I get so upset. <laughs> that's why I'm always defending her. I'm like, everyone just leave her alone. Like, can we just be kind? Like you can not like her. I get it. But can you just be kind about it? Can you just be kind? I don't particularly love Kate Middleton, but I'm not going to let hate on her because she doesn't deserve that. Just because, again, just because you don't like someone, that is not a good justification for acting like a sociopath and being vicious and mean. It's not. If you don't like someone, be kind about it. Why? Explore that. Why don't you like them? Because it might be a you problem. Okay? Okay. Guys, take care of each other. Be kind. Love you all. Thanks for the support. And all my links to my readings and my courses are below. Okay, bye.